How to use an Arduino like this to control a big beefy brushed DC motor like that? Well, the answer is an external motor controller. And in this video, we're gonna walk you through exactly how to make that work. So why do you even need an external motor controller? Why can't you just control it from the Arduino? Well, Arduinos are awesome at a lot of things, but one of the things they can't do out of the box is output a lot of current. So you can only output about 40 milliamps of current through each one of these pins, and a motor like this is gonna draw a lot more than that. So we're gonna go ahead and use this one by 15 amp motor controller from GoBuilda to control the motor. So if you're new to Arduinos, don't worry, we're gonna start slow and walk you through the whole process from wiring to programming and show you exactly what we're doing and why. And as far as prerequisite knowledge, uh, we're assuming that you're able to plug an Arduino into your computer and load some simple code onto it. So if you can do that much, you can follow along with this tutorial. For those of you that are following along, here's a wiring diagram of what we're doing here today. We're gonna have this as a downloadable PDF linked to from the description below. Now, before we go ahead and dig in, I wanna step back and lay a little groundwork first. Let's talk about how this Arduino is gonna be talking to our motor controller here it's gonna be using a form of communication called PWM. PWM stands for Pulse Width Modulation, and you may have heard of PWM. Uh, if you've ever used RC vehicles, it's very popular in the RC hobby industry, and it's also used in the world of robotics. Completely digging into all of its ins and outs is beyond the scope of this video. Suffice it to say that you can think of it like Morse code. You have a signal line that has pulses sent along it and the duration of each pulse indicates meaning. Next, I wanna cover the different kinds of connectors we're gonna be using in this project. Uh, for the uninitiated, this is gonna be really useful, but if you're already familiar with these kind of connectors, you can go ahead and skip forward ahead in the video. First up, we're gonna talk about the Humble TJCA connector. This is more commonly known as a servo connector because this is the kind of connector that just about every hobby servo uses. This is the kind of connector that you plug into receivers and um, they're very, very popular. The pins on TJCA connectors are 0.025 inches square and they're spaced every 0.1 inch apart. And that happens to be the exact same size pin and spacing as on Arduinos and the same size pins as on jumper wires, and that means that you can use jumper wires, Arduinos, and TJCA connectors together flawlessly. Next, let's talk about the colors of the wires that are connected to the TJCA connector. The first one you'll see here to the far left is white, and that's often yellow, and that's going to be your signal line. So it's a very common standard to have white or yellow represent the signal line. The line next to that is the middle wire, which is red, and that's sometimes orange, and the red or orange wire is going to be your positive voltage. And finally, on the far right, you have the black wire, and that's your ground wire. Sometimes that wire is green, so if you see a black or green wire, you know that that's intended to be a ground wire. Next, let's talk about the kind of connector we're gonna be using to connect our power from our battery here. This is an XT30 connector. And XT30 connectors are great for supplying power because one, they're keyed, which means you can't plug it in backwards. Also, they have a really tight hold, so they're not gonna come apart accidentally. Um, and finally, the amount of current they can carry is great for supplying power to your entire project, assuming your entire project needs 30 amps of continuous power or less, uh, hence the 30 in the name. And finally, as far as wires go along, we're gonna talk about bullet connectors. Bullet connectors are what's used on this motor, and bullet connectors are commonly used for motors in situations where you do want to be able to swap their orientation, unlike an XT30. So you wouldn't want something like an XT30 on your motor because you wouldn't be able to switch it around because the XT30 is keyed. Now, why is that useful on a motor? Well, brushed DC motors will simply change the direction of their uh, rotation based on the orientation of your wires. So if you're brand new to using motors like this, don't worry, plugging the motor in backwards won't actually hurt it uh, unless you're gonna drive it into something physically in your build, but it'll just change the direction of rotation. Next in the category of groundwork lane, I do wanna talk about motor controllers in general and this one specifically as well. Uh, motor controllers, sometimes you hear called speed controllers and sometimes you hear them called electronic speed controllers and sometimes you hear that abbreviated to ESCs. Now, usually when you hear ESC, 
that's a motor controller that's designed for a brushless motor, but that's not always the case. There's nothing about electronic or speeder controller that ties it into just brushless motors. Uh, and usually when you hear motor controller versus speed controller, usually that motor controller has a few more features than the speed controller, but that's not always the case either. We're gonna go ahead and use those phrases interchangeably here because by definition, they're pretty much all exactly the same thing. So let's talk about this particular motor controller that I'm using. This is a Gobilda 1 by 15 amp motor controller. Uh, one by meaning that it's one channel, as in it's intended to control one motor. Now, if you have multiple motors, you can connect them using Y harnesses off these bullet connectors. And as long as the total amount of current that they're drawing is within the range this motor controller can handle, you're totally fine. Um, 15 amps means that it can uh, supply power up to 15 amps continuously to that motor that's pulling the current and I like this over a open unprotected motor controller um, there are a lot out there that don't have a case on them that don't have you know big beefy mounting holes uh, this one lets me position it where I want it to be within my project and bolt it down and the case gives it a lot of protection from loose screws or dirt or whatever's going on in your project. Um, so uh, there are motor controllers that are shields for Arduinos that plug right into the top, but I know that this is gonna be super robust and I can keep adding more and more without uh, potentially getting in the way of the other electronics that are going on in my build. To power this project, we're gonna be using a 12 volt, 3000 milliamp hour battery. Uh, this is a nickel metal hydrate battery and it has a 20 amp fuse built into the red power line here. Finally, let's talk about the motor that we'll be using. This is actually a gear motor because we have a brushed DC motor here, and then we have a gearbox here. This is a really beefy planetary gearbox, and this particular series of motors is the 5203 series uh, Yellow Jacket planetary gear motors, and we'll put a link to these down in the description. These are awesome motors. You might want to check these out for your next project. Uh, but they supply a ton of torque or a ton of speed because we have a lot of gear ratios available for you to choose from. On the output shaft here, I have a hub, and I simply threw that on there to make it easier to see the rotation once we get going with the code. All right, let's dig in and start wiring this thing up. Uh, one of the first things you want to do is consider your power situation. Um, I have a 12-volt battery, and that will indeed work for an Arduino, although it seems a little counterintuitive that a little electronic device like this will run on uh, that much voltage. Uh, usually small electronics will want like 3.3 or 5 volts, but it's definitely within their safe uh, voltage range that they recommend for an Arduino Uno. Uh, and that's because it's got a little step down voltage regulator built into the board, which makes it really nice. So I can just plug in this 12 volt battery and that's gonna power my board. But I also wanna power my external motor controller. So I'm gonna use an XT30 Y harness so I can go ahead and power two different devices from this battery very easily. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and plug this into my motor controller and I'm not gonna plug it into the battery just yet. I'll save that for last. So we're thinking about power first, but we're gonna actually plug in the power last. To be able to connect this to the Arduino, I'm gonna use this little adapter here that converts it from XT30 to another TJC8. This particular TJC8 is referred to as a TJC8 power because it doesn't have the signal line. It just has the two power lines. And because it's TJC8, I can then go ahead and very easily plug in jumper wires so that I can plug it into my Arduino. So the red power line is gonna go into VN on the Arduino. Next, I'm gonna plug in my ground wire to one of the many ground pins. It really doesn't matter which of the ground pins you plug it into, all of the grounds will be connected. So plug it into one, just as good as plug it into any of the other ones. So we have our power all ready to go. I'm going to wait to plug in the battery like I mentioned, but next we're going to move on to getting that signal from the Arduino over to the motor controller. So I have a white jumper here, and I'm going to plug that into pin number 9. So you'll notice on the side and on the board here of this Arduino that there are tildes, little squiggly lines next to certain pins. And that represents the fact that that pin is capable of outputting a PWM signal. So you don't have to use pin number nine, that's what we're using today, but you could use any of the other pins that uses a squiggly line, one of those tildes. So we're gonna plug in that pin number nine 
into the signal line of the TJC8 that's feeding into our motor controller. Then, because all of your grounds really should be connected across different multiple electronic devices, we're going to plug in a black jumper wire to the ground line on that TJC8. And we're going to plug the other end of that into any of the grounds on your Arduino. So that makes sure that uh, you don't have any kind of technical gremlins. And if you are having issues with your electronics, if you have multiple devices, uh, one of the first things you want to check is if your ground is connected across those devices. That's sort of like the have you turned it off again and on again of uh, small electronics. All right, now that we have everything but the battery connected, we're going to go ahead and load the code onto the Arduino. We're going to run through that code line by line and show you exactly how this works. And then at the end, we'll plug in the battery and show you a demonstration of it working. All right, let's go ahead and plug in our Arduino to the computer. And you might be wondering about power conflict between the USB and our external battery. Um, the Arduino will pick between the two so they won't conflict. You just want to make sure that your battery is plugged into the VN pin. Um, but we don't have it plugged in yet because we don't really have the code on there to do anything. So just as a form of safety, we're going to wait till the end to plug that in. On the computer here, you can see that we have the Arduino IDE. Now, you can get this for free from the Arduino website, and we'll put a link to that in the description. So let's go ahead and jump into line number one. In line number one, we're including the servo library. And you might be wondering, servo library? We're not controlling a servo. Why does he include the servo library? But the thing of it is, servos operate off of a PWM signal, just like we want to send to this motor controller. So the servo library is going to give us uh, access to functions that will make our lives a little bit easier in making this happen. Moving on to line three, we're going to utilize the fact that we've included that servo library by creating a ESC underscore one object. So this is an object that was made from the servo class. And I'm putting ESC because it just keeps things a little bit cleaner than writing out motor controller or electronic speed controller or anything like that. It just keeps it nice and tidy. Uh, I'm putting underscore one in there because I want to think about this in a way that I can reuse this code for other projects where I might have additional motor controllers. So if I wanted to, I could just like copy this and paste it down here. And now this one's ESC number two and so on and so forth. Um, and then I would need to make additional changes down below, but we'll leave this here just as our imaginary second uh, channel. Now, Next, between lines six and eight, through that whole area, we have the setup function. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with Arduinos, this function will run when you turn the Arduino on. So this function will run just once, and usually you use this to kind of set things up. Um, and in this case, we're using it on line seven here to tell it that for ESC number one, we're going to be looking at pin number nine. That's digital pin number nine. Uh, and I specify that because there are analog pins and digital pins. But we want to make sure to use a digital pin that is, again, PWM capable, which you know that it is if it has that tilde next to it. Uh, we'll go ahead and continue with our imaginary second channel just so you can kind of see the process. And we'll put that on pin, let's say, 11. All right, moving on. Rows 11 through 13 have our loop function. Like I said, the Arduino always runs the setup function and it runs it once at the beginning and then it moves on to running the loop function. And as the name would imply, when it gets to the bottom, it goes back up to the top and it just keeps running and running that same function. So within the loop function, we are going to call a function called set ESC power. Now this is a custom function that I wrote for this video that you're free to use and we'll put a link to the code in the description below. Um, but I just wanted to have something that uh, very cleanly encapsulates the things you need to do every single time you're sending a command to this motor controller to change the speed or direction of the motor. So this function has two variables that you're passing it. The first variable is which motor controller you're sending this to, essentially which pin this is going to be going to. So this is going to ESC underscore one. Uh, and again, if I wanted to send that to our second imaginary motor controller, I could change that to underscore two. And then we also have a second variable here, and that is for the amount of power uh, we're sending to the motor. So I set this up so you can send 
send anywhere between negative 100 and positive 100 to represent going full speed backwards all the way up to full speed forwards and zero would make the motor stop. So um, we're gonna go ahead and use that. And so right now it's zero. I could go ahead and put this to 100 so that when we run this on our board, we'll see something actually happen. Since the set underscore ESC underscore power function is where all the magic happens, let's go ahead and dive into that uh, line by line. We'll take a look. Uh, so the first thing that we're seeing here is these are the variables that we're getting uh, passed in from up above. And so within this function, we're calling it just ESC because it could be ESC1, ESC2, we don't know, and it doesn't matter. So we'll, we'll just use this variable to represent whatever ESC uh, that command should be going to. And then we have our power variable, again, being passed in from up above. So this power variable, the first thing we want to do is make sure that that actually fits within the range that we want it to be within. So we're going to use the built-in function uh, constraint to say, hey, this function here, or this variable here rather, should be somewhere between minus 100 and positive 100. And if it's not, it's kind of just going to brute force it into that range. Um, so if I accidentally type 1000, it'll just bump it down to 100. Next, we have our signal underscore min and signal underscore max. Now, this function assumes that all of your motor controllers are using the same PWM range, so you have multiples of the same motor controller. Uh, if that's not the case, you can certainly bump this up to being a variable that you pass in or something like that. So what are these numbers? What does this mean? Well, do you remember when I was talking about PWM signals and how it's basically a pulse being sent along a signal line and the length of that pulse has meaning? This represents the minimum and maximum length of that pulse. That's literally what this is. And anything that you use that uses PWM signals uh, has some sort of minimum and max. And any kind of uh, motor controller or servo or anything that uses PWM ranges on our website on gobuilda.com will have that PWM range listed on the product page in the specs table. So you're gonna to wanna to look up the PWM range for whatever motor controller you're using, but because we're using a GoBuilda motor controller, finding that information is gonna be very easy. So on this particular motor controller, we have a minimum signal width of 1050 and a maximum width of 1950. So next on line 19, now that we know what the number is between minus 100 and positive 100, and we know the minimum and maximum PWM range that we want to send out to the motor controller, we want to map that number from the power to that PWM range. On line 19, we're using a cool little function called map. I use this all the time when I'm working with Arduinos. And what map does is it takes a variable that you pass it, and it looks at two different ranges. And it takes that variable, it looks at where that variable is proportionally within the first range, and then it figures out where that should be proportionally within the second range. So we're using it here uh, to figure out what our output signal should be. So our variable that we're creating is signal underscore output. We're passing in the power as our variable that it's going to mutate and pass back into that signal output placeholder there. The range that we're coming from is negative 100 to positive 100. And the range that we're going to is that PWM range, that signal underscore min and signal underscore max. So MAP's gonna do all the heavy lifting there to figure out what our output PWM signal should be. Finally, we're gonna use that servo object, the ESC, that we're passed in from up above. And we're gonna use this little function that's built into that called write microseconds. The write microseconds is gonna save you a lot of time and be a really nice clean way to output a good PWM signal on that PWM capable pin. So we're just simply passing in one variable. We're passing in that signal underscore output. That's the number that we figured out represents the speed and direction that we want that motor to go. All right, now that we've gone through that code top to bottom, let's actually take advantage of it and we'll do a little demo. So I'm gonna hop back up here to our loop. And today in this example, I'm just gonna take this line 12 and duplicate it and change the value 
and add a delay of half a second in between each one, just so it's very easy for those that are new to code to read through this line by line and see exactly what's happening. But this is probably not the way that you would want to use it in your project. Um, I would encourage you to learn about for loops, and we're going to link to both this example code that we're using in this demo right now, as well as a more elegant solution using a for loop in the description below. So let's go ahead and load this code on our board. Compiling, uploading, and done. So now I'm going to unplug the board from the computer and plug in our 12 volt battery. And we should see the motor here have these steps of speed. So that could be as smooth as you want it to be. You could use something a lot more elegant to vary the speed within your code, but I just wanted something that was really easy to look at. We're go going this speed, waiting half a second, going the next speed and so forth. Again, we'll put this code uh, online for you guys to use. We'll put a link in the description. I hope that this uh, video tutorial was helpful. If you have any questions, go ahead and drop them in the comments below or send us an email to tech at gobelda.com.